G'day. We're now finally got around to putting together a video about our iMove repair after the DC to DC converter failure, which unfortunately seems to be a pretty common failure in the Mitsubishi iMove Citroen C0, I think it is, Peugeot Ion type vehicles. Well, as you probably know from our previous videos, we had issues with Mitsubishi and at extensive cost, so we um, decided to repair the car ourselves. So this is a video on how we started doing that repair and discovered what exactly was wrong with the DC DC converter. So under this unusually small bonnet, step one, remove and disconnect. Well, not actually remove, just disconnect the 12 volt battery. And also don't forget to disconnect your negative terminal first, because if you don't do that and you've got the spanner on a positive terminal, hit the bodywork, there's a good chance you're going to short out the battery or yourself or anything in the car. But most important is removing that positive terminal. And now the 12 volt battery is isolated, comes the, what could be the most profitable or scariest part of the job. Removing the front seats to access the drive battery isolator plug. Now under the left hand front seat, you'll find a metal plate held on with two fasteners. Now underneath this is the drive battery or traction battery isolation plug. Now flick the little orange lever, remove the plug, and you're now a lot safer for being exploded by 330 volts and 300 amps. And now we're safe from imminent electrical death. It's time to go to the back of the car, open the access cover, Find the DC DC converter and have a look at all the other electronic gizmos back here. And yay for electric cars, and no need for degrees. Just get a vacuum cleaner out and she's all clean. Now, the next step's quite important, otherwise, you're going to get a wet surprise. Go back to the front of the car, find the bottom of the radiator drain hose, and remove that. Also, don't forget to open the cap at the back next to the DC DC converter to allow air in for the coolant to drain. Now once that's done, time is to disconnect all the cables running to the um, converter just to make sure it's 100% isolated from the 12 volt system and the high voltage system before you start opening up the box itself. Okay, now, so now the traction drive battery has been isolated, the coolant has been drained, it's time for the fun part, opening up the DC-DC to converter to see what damage has been done. Oh, and also, one fastener on the top of the converter is a special security type fastener. That's pretty common though. Oh, and one last thing, there's also a really good sealant holding this lid on too, you've got to break to, before you get the top off. And now you've spent some time getting through that sealant, let's have a look what's actually inside this thing. Yep, I have no idea what I'm looking at. This is good. This is good? I have to have a look at the diagram, the uh, wiring diagram, but I have a feeling that this is the AC in from the AC charger because we've got a live and neutral. Looking at that, they're 420 volt caps and that's on the bottom board so I think this board here is the AC in these go down to the bottom board so these caps are on that bottom board I think the bottom board is the DC DC converter so the top board is looking pretty good all the fuses are intact and no obvious signs of burning or damage so it's time to remove this top board and have a look and see what we can find underneath and here we are can you spot the failure Now, I'm pretty certain something right in there doesn't quite look right. It looks a little burnt. What I found is on this little board here, there's two resistors. One of the resistors has popped. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera there, but you can actually see the remains of the resistor to the left there and some residue from it popping on top of this um, thing here, which I'm not quite sure what that is at this point. But there is a code on it. I can find that out. So now we know the cause of our DC to DC converter failure. It looks like a little capacitor on that vertical board has exploded. So now it's time to remove the converter and get to work actually doing the repairs. Actually removing the cord is not too hard. One mounting bracket at the front, undo the plug at the front as well. There's also an earth lead at the rear of it, near the bumper bar. But also the hardest part is removing two coolant lines from underneath it. And to get these off, You've got to get underneath the car and pull the hose out. So now you've drained all the coolant out and spilt it over the floor. You can now remove the coolant bottle from the left hand side of the converter. And after that, unplug the AC inlet plug from the after the converter. So now all that's done, comes the time to remove the converter itself. And this is where we also rip out any wires or things you forgot to disconnect. So that's pretty much the end of this video, end of part one. The next video, if I can find the footage, is actually the repair of the converter itself. The repair was actually quite simple. It was just basically solder on two new capacitors that have been destroyed. 
We placed one fuse in the motor controller and that was it. So the total cost of the repair was about $20, two capacitors of J-Car and one fuse from Mitsubishi themselves. So it's actually not that hard to repair if this is the actual problem with your DC to DC converter. So if you got this far, thank you for watching and I hope you get your car fixed soon. Thank you.